How many tabs do you have open in your browser right now? Go on, have a looky. 10, 20, 50, or 200 like my friend Maxim admitted the other day. Oh, Maxim. Stay with me and I'll reveal the maximum number of browser tabs you should have open at any one time. But imagine now for a moment that your mind is a bustling Aussie pub. Picture a Saturday night. A light breeze drifts in from the open doors, carrying with it the familiar sense of frothy beer, wooden furniture and the hint of chips and gravy. The clink of glasses mingles with the low hum of conversation and you're there behind the counter pulling pints and sharing laughs. Now each tab you have open in your browser represents one of the patrons in this pub. Some are quiet, sipping their drink in a corner, not demanding anything. Others are louder, more raucous, demanding your immediate attention, like that larrikin who always insists on doing the footy tips right in the middle of rush hour. At first, a handful of patrons makes for a lively atmosphere. The conversation is spirited, the energy high. You feel on top of the world, capable of juggling all these interactions. It's this bustling pub feeling that often draws us to multitasking. It's the buzz, the thrill, the satisfaction of feeling busy and productive. But as the night wears on, more patrons begin to pour in. And with every new tab you open, another patron walks through the door. Before you know it, you're pulling pints left, right and centre. The pub is crowded, the noise level escalating, and suddenly the atmosphere is not so enjoyable. The extreme dart throwing, marshmallow toasting and professional napkin folding competitions that you've decided to run in your desire to diversify and raise more revenue have really taken off. And now you're stretched across multiple jobs and doing all of them really badly. Not to mention the fact that some clown has just ordered a Ramos gin fizz, which requires extreme measurement and an extended shaking time in the bloody cocktail maker. Just at the same time, a fight breaks out between the marshmallow toasters and the napkin folders, setting one of the napkins and a tablecloth on fire in the bistro. Whoops. The patrons are no longer lively, they're rowdy. You're on the verge of a riot, my friend. The conversations that were once intriguing are now demanding, distracting, and downright deafening. The pub of your mind has become chaotic, brimming with information overload, pulling you in a hundred different directions as you try to keep everyone happy while also trying to put a fire out. Literally. Your productivity slips as the quality of your interactions plummets to an all-time low, drowned out by the ever-increasing noise. Here's the kicker. Productivity is not about being the publican who can serve the most pints to the most patrons. It's not about having the busiest pub. It's about having the best pub for your most loyal patrons. Offer gluten-free beer, serve organic schnitzels and put your prices up. It's about providing that perfectly poured pint with top-notch bevy banter to boot. It's about the finesse, the care, the focus. And to do this, we need to shift our mindset from the bartender who is constantly scrambling to the seasoned bouncer standing at the front door. This bouncer, he's got discernment. He knows when the pub is at its best capacity and he's not afraid to say, enough mate, and close the doors when things are getting out of hand. He recognizes when to limit entry to ensure a top quality experience for everyone inside. So take a leaf out of the bouncer's book Stand firm at the door of your mental pub. Start closing some of those bloody tabs. Quieten down the ruckus and reclaim your focus. Give your attention to the valued customers you've got. They'll appreciate that perfectly poured organic gluten-free pint much more than the hurried slosh you've been serving up. And remember, less is more. More patrons might mean more business, but not necessarily better business. The same goes for your tasks and tabs. Reduce the tabs, reduce the patrons, and reduce the noise. Make your mind's pub a kind of place where quality trumps quantity. The kind of place where you do less, but undoubtedly, you do it better. Now, picture the tech industry in the late 1990s. Innovation is booming, companies are racing to outdo each other, and amidst it all, Apple is on the brink of bankruptcy. The company's trying to keep pace, its product lines multiplying in a desperate bid to capture the market. They're producing everything from desktop computers to digital cameras to bloody CD players. But instead of leading the race, they're floundering. Enter Steve Jobs. He had been ousted from Apple over a decade earlier and had returned to the company he co-founded in its hour of need. Jobs looked at the chaos, the rampant multitasking that was pulling the company in all directions, and he said, enough. Jobs was never one to beat around the bush. He was known for his laser sharp focus, his ability to cut through the bullshit and see what really mattered. He was in essence a master at closing the proverbial browser tabs. On his return to Apple, he did something that seemed counterintuitive in a culture that equated busyness with productivity. 
He slashed 70% of Apple's product lines. And just like that, the noise was gone. The company was no longer spreading itself thin, trying to juggle too many tabs at once. Instead, they focused on a select few products that they could make exceptionally well. Jobs had a famous quote about focus. People think focus means saying yes to the thing you've got to focus on, but that's not what it means at all. It means saying no to the hundred other good ideas that there are. His strategy paid off. By cutting down on the excess, the tabs that were consuming resources without delivering significant returns, Apple could invest its energy and creativity in a few key areas. And this renewed focus led to products like the iMac, the iPod, and later the iPhone, revolutionizing the tech industry and turning Apple into one of the most valuable companies on the planet. Job done. What we can take away from Jobs' story is that doing less isn't about being lazy or unambitious, it's about being selective. It's about knowing where to direct your energy, your creativity, and your time. In a world that tempts us with endless information and tasks, it's more important than ever to be discerning about the tabs we keep open. So take a moment, look at the number of crap you've got open on your computer. Each of them is a task, a project, a distraction vying for your attention. Every successful entrepreneur, every innovation didn't come from juggling a million tasks at once. They came from focus, from doing less, better. So let's channel a bit of Jobs' ruthlessness. Close down some tabs, focus on what's essential. After all, success isn't about being the busiest or the most stretched thin. It's about doing less, but doing it exceptionally well. That's what will set you apart. Now, I promised I'd reveal the maximum number of browser tabs that you should have open at any one point in time. Are you ready? Three. More than three open tabs and you're kidding yourself. You're pretending to be productive and busy. No, you are not being productive. You are not Bruce Nolan. You are not Tony Stark. You're doing nothing. And you're not cool enough to be the dude. This is a bummer, man. You're slowing yourself down by convincing yourself that you're busy. The truth is, you're overwhelmed and only half doing all the things. So simplify, do less and do it better. 80% of the tasks on your to-do list should be either delegated, deferred or just fucking deleted. Close those tabs. Use a Chrome extension that prevents more than three open tabs at a time. Focus and then rest. This is how I hustle. How about you? If you like this video, then click the thumb pointing up share it with someone you know who is overwhelmed and hates their life, and subscribe for more videos like this. I'm Troy Dean. Stay classy, gangsters.